GitHub Spark is the latest AI code editor creating code from just a single prompt, building web applications extremely rapidly from Microsoft. And I tried it and it was fantastic. It's giving competition for applications such as V0, Lovable Bev, and Cursor. In today's video, we'll build an entire Next.js web application. I'll walk you through a bunch of the features such as theme editor, mobile view, and we will actually publish it to a public GitHub repo. So let's go. So here is the interface of GitHub Spark. You can actually access it here by navigating to github.com slash spark slash your username. And it's actually through the web interface, just as I mentioned, a lot of tools, Replit, V0, Lovable, they all follow this kind of process. And I actually really like it a lot because there is nothing to download. You just navigate to a URL and you function directly through the URL, uh, through the web application. I actually did a single shot prompt to see what GitHub Spark is actually capable of because I'm preparing for a workshop that I want to do training engineers on AI and the different kinds of tooling and what the tools are capable of, how to build, test, and deploy a web application. And so I wanted to give GitHub, GitHub Spark a trial run here to see how it compares to other tools. And so I dropped in this prompt over here on the left-hand side. You can see we are in the Iterate tab and you can see that here is the prompt that I created uh, to create a beautiful, functional, and production-ready web application using Next.js, TypeScript, the app should include a mo modern responsive UI with a clean design. Here are all of the features that need to exist, a RESTful API backend for CRUD operations, state management, optimistic UI updates for a smooth user experience. All code should be organized, ready for deployment, and include instructions. And so, with this single prompt, the Spark began to make changes. It created all of these files here. If we want to access all of these files, they're here in uh, code mode. You can see that opens up. It looks very similar to VS Code, right? That experience. And so then we can navigate through the code here. This is the preview mode. Actually, I think this is, it looks really good. So here you can see we can add a to-do. It gets added here um, we can check it off uh, there is active status which we have two there's completed status which we have one and all of them which we have three here we can clear the completed here oh working really well for a single shot prom this is actually a really fantastic app um, outside of that you can have both views as well you can have the code view with the UI view, the rendered UI as well. I think it's a really great experience, right? Our typical developer workflow where we'll have the code editor on the left-hand side and the application on the right-hand side in order to be able to change code and then visualize the changes. We can do the same thing here, right? These are not expandable. So we're kind of stuck in this view, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm sure they will fix that in the future. But right now you can see we got the code view here and then we got all the actions on the right-hand side. We also can select elements in order to be able to edit them, right? If we don't like something, we can come in here and for example, we can say maybe here to each component, request it to delete, add a delete button for every single component. And so now you can see the AI here is executing. It's outputting its logic, letting us know exactly what it's thinking. Very common these days in all of these no-code solutions. Uh, this is what it looks like when it's actually working. You got all these cute little icons moving and the AI thinking and operating. Yeah, well, in this case, it failed and it's made zero changes. Some suggestions here from the AI as well, if we want to include more features. And so why don't we add a bulk delete option for multiple selected tasks and let that execute while I explain the rest here. We also have a mobile view, even though it's unavailable while iterating. We can look at the theme. In the theme options, we can select how we want our UI to look. I actually really like this feature because I haven't seen this option in the other no-code tooling, such as Lovable or V0, where we can select the theme. And so all of them are available by default here. Let's test one after our UI is ready. We can also see the data that exists in the table in terms of like the ID of the element, the title, and all of the other information. Uh, we can see a JSON as well, which is really cool. And we can see our prompts here. So whenever prompts are detected, we can put them in here. And then there are assets. We can upload files such as a company logo, a restaurant menu, and so on. 
I want to talk about my initial thoughts and experience with the tool. I actually think it is really good. It was really easy to get started, really easy to figure out what to do. The application that it created with a single shot prompt was beautiful, working well, and I didn't have any errors on initial creation. It's not perfect. As we saw when I tried to add a feature using the selection tool, it didn't do anything. Maybe actually that was an error on my end when I should have applied the feature at a more global level instead of just an individual component, but it's not perfect. None of these tools are perfect. A lot of the issues that I find are integrating with more complicated type of environments is when you have to start integrating with a database, integrating with GitHub and creating CI CD pipelines. Um, how do you do authentication? Those are the kind of issues start to arise as we build out an enterprise level type of application, but for the UI and doing exactly what I wanted to do, it did a really good job. One of the best experiences that I've ever had with any of these no code platforms. All right, why don't we take a look at the theme options here and we can change the theme of our application with just a few clicks, which I think is really awesome. I haven't seen this in any other tool. Uh, let's try Neo Brutalism. That's a funny name. Uh, that's what it looks like. And I think that's really cool. The most unique feature that I've seen in any of these apps is the ability to change the theme. And I think it's very valuable because in the other applications, I haven't seen an easy way to change the theme. In fact, I haven't even thought about changing the theme in the other ones. I just let it output whatever it outputted. And then I had to chat with the AI if I wanted to update the theme. Um, there's also this mobile view that if you want to look at our application and what it will look like in mobile, this is exactly what it looks like. And here it looks really good. Can we interact with it like normal? Yes, we can. By the way, happy Sunday, everyone. I can mark this completed. Oh, cool. Look, it even puts the dates, uh, which are absolutely correct. And now I think the only thing that's left is to publish this and see what happens. And so that's super easy. As you see, I clicked the publish button and now it's sending the bytes to the moon. And let's see if it's sending them to the moon, it might take a little bit to come back. So we'll see how long that takes. Beautiful. And there is the link. Uh, oh, and it even says who can view it. Uh, only me, all GitHub users or organizations. All right, this is good. I like this capability to show the visibility, but what if I wanna go beyond GitHub users, right? What if I wanna create an application that is tailored to the public? And that seems to be missing right now. And that to me is a problem because most of the time, especially with these AI tools, I'm developing applications for me, but then also I'm making them accessible to the public just in case they want to use it. And so I want that capability. So let's go ahead and click on this and see what happens. And here's the app. It's available here in the UI, works as normal. Oh, even shows a percentage completion, which is really good. Really, really sharp implementation in general. Very impressed by GitHub Spark and what they have achieved here. The other thing that we're going to do is why don't we create a repository from here? Uh, this will be the URL and I'm going to make this publicly accessible for you all so that you can actually see the output of the source code so that you can try it out yourself. So there it is, GitHub Spark in under 10 minutes. What do you think about it? Have you tried it? Do you think it's better than tools like Lovable or Replit? Are you going to start using it instead? Let me know in the comments. Always looking forward to hearing from you. Let me know what you want to see next as well, because I use all of this feedback and all the information from every single video to decide what should I create next just for you. And so your comments and your thoughts are extremely important. I sincerely appreciate you. I hope you have a blessed day. I've been Nikolai Velotkin. Peace out.